beat Joe Frazier two out of three, and the third was the greatest fight ever fought, the thriller in Manila. The government and people of the Republic of the Philippines proudly present the thriller in Manila. The interesting thing to me, I heard something college. I remember the thriller in Manila, right? We went to a drive-in movie theater. Wow. It was like $30 for a car. We had about 15 guys in the car. We had lounge chairs in the back, and we watched that thing, and it was an unbelievable event. It wasn't a fight, it was an event. Muhammad Ali! Ali! Let's just go to Joe Frazier right away here. Three times, lost the first one, obviously, won the next two. These were epic fights. Sure, the little and big, all alike, will keep coming to see the fight. I'm the resurrection, the phase of the whole day. If we look at the heavyweight division, which was once upon a time, you could make the case. It was, it was, it was, it was America's favorite sport. But the sport of boxing, what it is, isn't what it was. What it was was, I mean, you had gladiators going into the ring. He said people don't know this. Why is he loved so much? It goes way far beyond the ring. Normal fighter. Not have continued. I mean, it, was, it would have been over. This fight could have been over six times. So, now Jackie Robinson was a guy who kind of had to turn the other cheek. The microscope was on him. The Muhammad Ali would stick the chin out and dare you to hit him. He said, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I don't, you're not going to tell me who I am. But Muhammad Ali, what he stood for, he gave identity to the black athlete that you could actually speak. Yeah, and you could say what was on your mind. My father wasn't only great in the ring, people loved who he was as a person, so it was like full circle. He was the greatest technical fighter that ever was. He had a devastating jab, and Ali took on the biggest, baddest, toughest guys on the planet. One thing just to run your mouth and try to promote a fight, but what my father did, you know, for the world, yep. you know, not just boxing, was just on a whole nother level. His beliefs were first. Yeah. It wasn't about, you know, what, what people thought of him, what, what he should do. Former World Heavyweight Champion Cassius Clay refused to take the oath of induction into the army. The black Muslim fighter, who is also known as Muhammad Ali, was immediately stripped of his title by the World Boxing Association. I ask you guys, how many athletes today would give up three of the best years yes. of their lives to stand up and have a conviction about something? And to say, you know what? This is bigger than all of them. in a different time. Sure. Obviously, he was somebody that refused to enter the Vietnam War, and you know what, what, what the residue of that impact was. That he was a conscientious objector, that he took a stand. He used his star power. He, he risked his star power to take a stand for racism and against the Vietnam War. You my enemy. My enemy is a white people, not Vietnam, the Chinese, the Japanese. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. The Vietnam War, his stance he took, he said, I ain't got no quarrel with them Viet Cong. He said his famous line, Three and a half years of his prime, he gave it up because of his religious beliefs. And he missed three and a half of the most prime years of your career you could miss. There have been many questions put to me why I refuse to be inducted into the United States uh, Army. He, he actually inspired Martin Luther King to come out against the Vietnam War. King didn't want to do it because he didn't want to alienate the Johnson administration. He took a page from Muhammad Ali's book. It has been said that I have two alternatives. Either go to jail or go to the Army. But I would like to say that there is another alternative. And that alternative, that alternative is justice. because that's one place he won't be able to duck. The vibrations are against him, the planets are against him, and already he right. lost the first five rounds. I don't prove the world, but I'm still the fastest, the prettiest, the most classic, the most scientific, the greatest fighter of all time. That one did no damage, that one did. Two wild right hands taken on the side of the head of Muhammad Ali.
the most menacing heavyweight of all time. It would be George Foreman. Ali continues to try to tie his man up. Zach Clayton separates him. Throw the dope. George Foreman. George Foreman wasn't selling grills. He was the beast of all time. He was selling beat down. It was scary. I'm going to float like a butterfly and sing like a bee. George King hit with his hands can see. incredible fighters that were just falling like trees, you know, after getting yeah. chopped down by George Foreman. Other boxers were scared, handlers were scared, reporters were scared. Howard Cosell, one of my idols, this guy was scared for Muhammad Ali. Get him to the ring with the guy. I bluffed him. I done everything. Beat him up. <laughs> Basically for about five or six rounds. I thought it was easy. Then about the sixth round, he whispered in my ear after I'd hit him in the side. That all you got, George? I was afraid he was going to get killed by a George Foreman that many of our young viewers don't know. the most emotional and exciting night of my sports watching life, seriously. And when he knocked out George Foreman, my father, my daddy, cried. And Muhammad Ali was an outspoken athlete. And to be an outspoken athlete in the 60s, that was taboo. All of you chumps are gonna bow when I whip him. All of you, I know you got him. I know you got him, Dick. But the man's in trouble. I'm gonna show you how great I am. He just beat Joe Frazier two out of three, and the third was the greatest fight ever fought to thrill it in Manila. I grew up in that era. I grew up as a black athlete, with basically coached by white coaches. And you can never ask a coach why. Muhammad Ali was proud enough and big enough to ask the question, why? It, it, it seemed like the greatest upset ever. Now I look back on it, it wasn't much of an upset because this, this was the greatest competitor I ever saw other than Michael Jordan. I think it's going to be over. It's all over. Sleep a little air. Because this has to have been one of the most bruising heavyweight championships of all time. And Ali is in the same hotel. And he walks in with this entourage. And we're looking, and it's like the Red Sea had just parted open. It's Muhammad Ali. And all of us as professional athletes, we're looking at this guy and we're like, that's Muhammad Ali. Look at this guy. He has a whole moving in on London. I'm by Muhammad Ali. London goes down. When he's in the room, he's almost, it's like, wow. He just has that feeling of you want to be around him. My gosh. I must be the greatest.